You're listening to Rebel Spirituality with me, Sam Goldfinch. Here's the truth. Wisdom doesn't follow rules. So each week we're going to explore what it means to wake up your way so you can live a more peaceful, creative and inspired life no matter your circumstances. It's time to blaze your unique path to truth. Hey Rebel friends. Okay, this week we're going to talk about toxic positivity. You know, what is it? It's a buzzword right now. We hear it a lot. Um, but what is it? And, and what's our relationship to it? And is it is it kind of getting in the way of us living a beautiful life, right? And, and the first thing I want to say to frame this whole discussion is I really want to kind of be a rebel and speak out against the idea that there's such a thing as positive and negative emotions in a good, bad sense, right? There's definitely, for sure, we're all aware of the fact that there are some feelings or emotions um, or sensations that we can experience in the body that are that feel dysregulated, right? That don't feel comfortable, that feel a bit icky or a bit sticky, you know, they're not very nice. And there are others that feel much more light, more expansive, um, and they're more pleasurable, right? Now, in this sense, and in that sense, it's kind of like thinking about a battery, right? At one end, there's positive and at one end, there's negative. But it's not like that one end of the battery is good and one end of the battery is bad. It's just that there's different, there's poles, right? There's kind of different different levels of consciousness, I guess. In that way, sure, absolutely. Our feelings and our sensations, they're guiding us home, you know, like as Sid Banks always used to say, you know, when we're in those beautiful, clear feelings and we're in clarity, we're in love, we're in peace, we're just, we're hanging out in the truth of who we really are. You know, the veil is is thinner. There's not a lot of contaminated crap on top of the screen. It's a signal that we're we're home. And so it, it can be a wonderful guidance system. It can let us know what's going on. Like, are we full of anger? Are we full of love? Are we full of joy? Like what's, what's going on for us? And in that sense, that's very, very, powerful. But I think we need to throw out the idea that there are some emotions that are good and some that are bad because we live in a society that kind of promotes all of the good ones. And, you know, there's something you can take for that and all this kind of stuff. And this is not an attack on um, any of us or any judgment on the things that we've that we've done. You know, for me, I used to have a whole list of feelings that were in the kind of like bad negative sense in that sense and i wanted to just get rid of them banish them forever right but it it wasn't a fully rich life because we're human and we are there aren't any mistakes we're supposed to feel we're supposed to have this whole beautiful um spectrum of feelings and emotions right so i want to frame this conversation around toxic positivity knowing that there's no such thing as good or bad feelings or emotions there are just feelings and emotions um and yeah now, there are definitely times in life where we're suffering unnecessarily, right? I guess is the way that I kind of think about it. Perhaps we're running a story, could be a story of judgment on ourselves or others, or we're carrying non-forgiveness. Um, and again, no judgment on that, right? It's just like a statement of what's what's happening. We're holding on to something and it's and it's we're we're suffering because of that. And there are many, many times in our life where we can let those stories go or we can forgive ourselves and forgive others. We can stop judging and we can wake up into just a just a much more beautiful world where uh, where we're aligned with the truth of all of those beautiful feelings. Right. And that's something that I think we're all on our own journey to do. There are parts there are parts of our life where we're kind of really close to how it works. And there are parts of our life where we're there, where there's lots of thinking in between us and that thing, you know? Um, and it could be invisible thinking. It could be stuff that's innocently been collected, unconscious stuff from back in the day or whatever. Um, and so we're on that journey and there are times in life where it would be like unkind and unwise for us not to have a rich, deep experience of sadness or a rich, deep experience of um, grief or something like that. You know, would it be a kindness to take those things away when we love people, love people with all of our heart? You know, when when they leave, like what could be more natural? What could be more authentic? What could be more loving for ourselves and others than to have that deep, authentic experience the thing is it's knowing that it's safe that's the most powerful thing you know the power of thought is much more than than just the thinking in our head you know when we're thinking about this incredible spiritual principle of thought that's bringing our reality to life it's 
to say that it's, uh, it's, you know, it's only thinking that you're experiencing. No, of course, it's this incredible um, formless energy that's bringing my reality to life and it's bringing your reality to life, right? And it's wonderful and it's safe. And, and of course, we live in a world where there are, there are tigers and there are cars and stuff. And, you know, it's like get out of the way of cars. We want to keep ourselves physically safe. But psychologically, we are safe. Just for many of us, we got the message that we're not. So we run away from our feelings. And to me, toxic positivity is is just one of those kinds of tools that seemingly is like resistance effectively, right? So we kind of go and we're trying to like, oh, it's okay. You know, this is this huge, terrible thing has just happened. And like we say to ourselves, oh, you know, you should be above this, right? You bypass it or whatever. Or you say to your, you, you say that thing to, to a friend or something that's not kind because they're having a deep, honest, authentic experience of sadness. And we, you know, perhaps we don't know that that's safe for them because we're afraid of our sadness. And so we've kind of innocently, and I keep saying the word innocent because it's important because none of this is necessarily intentional, all right? But then we try and pull someone out of their sadness when it's the most beautiful and rich thing. <laughs> Grief and, and sad, they alchemize into love, into deep gratitude, you know? It's not, not a mistake, these feelings. They don't need solutions either because they're not problems. So I think very often toxic positivity is is that kind of that thing that can happen where we might kind of just kind of be, oh, don't worry about it, Pollyanna, thinking about stuff all the time. But that's really different to kind of being optimistic, you know? Like for me, I find cheerfulness and optimism and, I, I you know, it's, I think that's wonderful. I don't I th see a big distinction between those two things, you know? I don't think optimism is being like a tox being toxic when it comes to being positive, right? For me, it's the idea that, if you think back to the initial where we started this discussion about a collection of feelings and sensations being okay and others not being, it would maybe toxic positivity is kind of just trying to promote and constantly be in this collection of things that we think are okay and not honoring our true feelings about something, right? Because feeling is healing. And we can tell ourselves that we're not experiencing something or not feeling something. But the body will let us know, like the system is so wise, it will, it, it will, it will do what it needs to do. Right. And so if we keep it down and resist it, we'll, we will suffer for that too. Like we'll be hanging around, that energy will be hanging around in us. And so the one thing that allows us that seeing this, one thing it allows us to do is to have our authentic and honest emotions back so that we just see these things, not as good, bad, but as this incredible power of thought that we're all experiencing that is creating our reality moment to moment to moment. Um, and that's just the most amazing and incredible thing in the world that it's doing that for us. It's, it allows us to experience life and all of our experiences and all of their beauty uh, with a depth of, and, and a richness that isn't available to us if we're kind of afraid of some of our experience. And there's that beautiful quote by, by Sid Banks. He said, you know, if the only thing that people learn was not to be afraid of their experience, that would, that alone would change the world. Right. And I mean, I've heard that so many times, but it's so, there's so much truth in that. So much truth in that. If we knew that our experience was safe, we wouldn't have to be toxic in our positivity or whatever, you know, we wouldn't have to be kind of running away from our feelings or, or innocently grabbing substances or whatever to try and kind of rescue ourselves from our emotions or whatever. That was kind of what I was up to for the longest time. So when Sid was talking about, you know, you don't need to, we don't need to talk about our personal problems. We need to, it's, it's about spiritual facts. It's about having a deep experience that wakes us up to the truth of how things work. In an instant, if somebody truly sees for themselves that their psychological experience is safe, the ripple effects of that throughout their life and the lives of, is, is, is huge, is huge, you know, because suddenly we know we can feel our sadness. We know we can feel our grief and um, we don't see it as like a, like a problem or something wrong. You know, we're at, we can become more human in all of our felt senses and allow this kind of illusion of separation between the spiritual and the world of form 
to just to just fall away and just hang out in this beautiful space where we get to feel everything and the richness of it. Um, and if we wake up or realize that we're suffering unnecessarily because we're telling ourselves a story, we can just look towards that dimension to bring something new and beautiful through. So we're not in conflict. We're not in conflict. And that's why this understanding, the inside out understanding that I'm talking about, isn't the same as like positive thinking or something like that, right? Because we're not just trying to fill our heads with positive stuff all the time, which could be toxic, right? We're honoring the safety and the inherent beauty in all of our experience and being kind to ourselves when we notice that we've been scaring ourselves with our imagination or we've been caught up in our own judgment or the judgment of others and just allowing those things to dissolve in the, uh, in the furnace of you, right? It gets burnt up. Those things get alchemized. They get digested in, in love and understanding as we deepen our understanding and as our level of consciousness shifts. All right, team. What a cool discussion. That was really, really fun. I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you soon.